Compulsive thoughts can be incredibly challenging to overcome, especially when they lead to compulsive behaviors like addiction, whether it is to alcohol or other drugs, sex, or food. Fortunately, the ideas of Ouspensky and the Fourth Way, along with the teachings of Rebecca Nottingham and Maurice Nichol, offer some valuable insights into how we can stop these thoughts from taking over our lives. I wish to interject that I don't think that we should moralize over these things. We simply need to find ways to relate to what we have in our lives that truly work for us and be as honest to ourselves as we can possibly be whether these ways truly work, and what we can and need to do to change what doesn't. One of the central tenets of the fourth way is the idea of self-observation. This involves paying attention to one's thoughts and behaviors without judgment or identification. By practicing self-observation, we can begin to see the patterns and habits that underlie our compulsive thoughts and actions. We can start to understand the triggers that set them off and the consequences they have on our lives. This awareness is the first step towards breaking free from the grip of compulsive thoughts. We need to become aware of what we are telling ourselves. How we talk ourselves into going against our intentions. I've, for example, noticed how I over and over again talk myself into eating junk food by telling myself that I need to relax, stop being so strict with myself, live in the moment and enjoy life. While all of this is sound advice in a sense, it needs to be approached with awareness and it certainly doesn't work when it makes me do things that I really don't want to do. In this instance we are talking about junk food, but it can be applied to anything. The momentary pleasure that I derive from eating the junk food is totally outweighed by the pain it causes me afterwards, and since it's not something my body wants, it's not really something I want either. But since I'm not always good at listening to myself, my thoughts often fool me into thinking that I do. It does however substitute for some other unfulfilled need and if I want to break free from compulsive eating, I need to take the question of what this need is seriously. Another key concept in the fourth way is that of the three centers. According to this model, we have three centers of intelligence, the physical, the emotional, and the intellectual, which also correspond with the lower three chakras. Each of these centers has its own strengths and weaknesses, and they are meant to work together in harmony. However, when one center becomes dominant and the others are suppressed, we become imbalanced and prone to compulsive behaviors. For example, someone who is addicted to drugs or alcohol may be acting primarily from their emotional center. They may be seeking to numb painful emotions or seek a sense of euphoria to escape their mundane life. However, this behavior is not sustainable and can lead to negative consequences. By bringing awareness to the emotional center, we can start to address the underlying emotional issues that are driving the addiction. Similarly, someone who is addicted to work or exercise may be acting primarily from their physical center, but this can actually be related to all of the three centers. They may be seeking to distract themselves from uncomfortable feelings or seeking a sense of accomplishment. However, this behavior can lead to burnout and physical exhaustion. By bringing awareness to the physical center, we can start to address the underlying physical issues that are driving the addiction. In addition to self-observation and the three centers, the fourth way also emphasizes the importance of developing a conscious will. This involves actively choosing our thoughts and actions rather than simply reacting to external stimuli. By developing a conscious will, we can break free from the automatic, compulsive patterns of behavior that keep us stuck in addiction. This is however something that needs to be cultivated over time, because developing this kind of resilience isn't easy. We first need to become aware of these patterns and challenge the discomfort that ensues every time we try to break free. We will inevitably fail over and over again, and when we do we need to refrain from judging ourselves, as failure is a natural part of this process. If we persist, we will grow stronger over time. Rebecca Nottingham and Maurice Nichol, two teachers of esoteric Christianity, offer additional insights into how we can stop compulsive thoughts. Nottingham teaches that addiction is a symptom of a deeper spiritual issue. She believes that we all have a longing for connection with the divine, and when we are disconnected from this source, we seek substitutes in the form of addiction. To address this issue, Nottingham advocates for developing a spiritual practice that connects us with the divine. This could involve prayer, meditation, or other forms of contemplation. By cultivating a connection with the divine, 
we can satisfy our spiritual longing and reduce the pull of addiction. This also feeds directly into changing our thought patterns. Prayer, when practiced regularly, turns our thoughts into an interaction with God, rather than being the otherwise solitary chatter inside our heads. This while meditation helps us to put a distance between us and our thoughts, which in turn helps us to de-identify ourselves with them. We learn that we don't have to believe what our thoughts tell us, that we have the power to stop the thought trains that pass through our heads and substitute them for other thoughts. Nickel, on the other hand, focuses on the role of attention in breaking free from compulsive thoughts. He believes that our attention is the most valuable thing we have, and that we must learn to direct it consciously if we want to overcome addiction. According to Nickel, when we become absorbed in our thoughts and emotions, we lose our ability to direct our attention. This leads to compulsive behavior and a sense of being out of control. Again this is about distancing ourselves from our thoughts, so that we can make conscious choices about them. To overcome this, Nickel suggests practicing conscious attention. This involves intentionally directing our attention towards something in the present moment, such as our breath or a physical sensation. By doing this, we can break free from the grip of compulsive thoughts and regain our sense of control. This goes hand in hand with what we do in meditation, and this can actually be viewed as a form of active meditation. One practical technique that combines several of these approaches is mindfulness meditation. Mindfulness involves paying attention to the present moment, without judgment or distraction. By practicing mindfulness, we can become more aware of our thoughts and emotions, and begin to develop a greater sense of control over them. To practice mindfulness meditation, find a quiet place where you won't be interrupted. Sit in a comfortable position and focus on your breath. Notice the sensation of the breath moving in and out of your body. When your mind wanders, gently bring your attention back to your breath. As you become more comfortable with mindfulness, you can begin to expand your awareness to include other sensations in your body, as well as your thoughts and emotions. As you observe your thoughts and emotions, try to do so without judgment or identification. Simply notice them and let them go. Over time, mindfulness meditation can help you develop greater awareness and control over your thoughts and behaviors, and reduce the grip of compulsive patterns. In conclusion, stopping compulsive thoughts and behaviors requires a holistic approach that incorporates self-observation, awareness of the three centers, conscious will, attention, and spiritual connection. It's a challenging but worthwhile process that can lead to greater freedom and fulfillment in life. By seeking support from others and practicing mindfulness, we can develop the tools and resilience needed to break free from addiction and live a more fulfilling life. The most crucial step here is to realize that we are not our thoughts and that our thoughts are not to be trusted. We need to realize this not just on an intellectual level, but really make it an understanding on all levels and see how this understanding can be applied to our everyday life experiences. When we start to incorporate this understanding into our lives, again is much more than a mere intellectual understanding, we make a huge leap. Because this means to take conscious control over our inner life, instead of just letting it happen to us. It means taking conscious control over how we experience life and relate to the world. That's it for today. If you want to read more about our journey, our discoveries along the way and the observations that we've made about the world, spirituality, Christianity and the human condition, please visit our blog. If you want to support our channel, you are welcome to buy an item from one of our shops. You will find links to all of this in the comments section and in the description. Also, please like, subscribe, comment and share the video. And hit the notification bell, so that YouTube notifies you of new videos. Thank you for your time.